I'll tell you what, I told John we can't let there be any glitches because it's April Fool's and we don't want people thinking that we're messing with them on this painting. Hi, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today, not a joke, I am going to teach these cotton candy clouds, this beautiful photograph that was taken by the travel bloggers, Kevin and Amanda. There's a bunch of information in the description below, and I just really want to thank them for giving us permission so that we could use this amazing image because you guys really, 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 really wanted to know how to paint it. And they were so sweet. You should totally check them out. I included all their social media details. And you can go get tips on trip photography. I know a bunch of you travel and recipes and DSLR information. It's a really cool resource if you've never checked it out. And, you know, as somebody that likes food and travel, I'm for it, even though I can't go anywhere right now. Oh, that was a big mouthful. Happy holidays. Not, I'm not succeeding in April Fool's today because apparently my humor is not calibrated for the holiday. On the mic is my husband, John. Hi, guys. Um, and he saved you from many, many misinformed pranks. He's going to be tracking me with one of our four cameras, uh, making sure that you can create this at home. My whole thing about this painting is going to be that you can also paint this. I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm going to explain it very specifically so you can create this at home. I'm so excited. There's not a lot of colors. They're all in, all the information is like totally in the description below and I'm just ready to put it in. Is everybody ready to do it? Oh yeah. Ready Freddy? Ready Freddy. Ready Freddy? I don't know. I'm in a weird mood today because you didn't let me prank because apparently I can't prank because I don't know where the boundary is. Okay so <laughs> This is an 11 by 14 canvas panel by Ampersand. Um, I was gifted a bunch of these and I'm kind of in love with them. And you're going to be seeing me do these. These are just like your, you know, these are, you have canvas boards, you have canvases, just any surface for acrylic beer painting on is fine. We have a wish here for Brenda's little brush, Elsa, to feel better and for her lungs to clear up. And we totally hope you're feeling better, Elsa. And also great name. Very good name. Um, healing in general wishes came in for just families to come back together and heal. Happy safe holidays for everybody around the world, no matter where you are. Um, definitely safe pranking. And we also uh, are just wishing that we all pull in some really good people into our lives. So I'm wishing for each one of you that a special person comes into your life that's light and positivity. I am super inspired by Will Smith lately. He's going to think I'm stalking him because I subscribe to all his things. But he keeps spreading positivity. And I don't know what to do. If you're going to spread positivity, I think I'm going to have to follow your social media. And try not to be jelly that you just walked up here on YouTube two seconds ago and are completely good at it. <laughs> that's fine. That's cool. That's probably how it is when you're a mega superstar. Just talent. So I'm going to put all my acrylic paint behind. Up, oh, Just real quick, I'll go over the colors. I had phthalo green, phthalo blue, primary cayenne, primary magenta, primary yellow, little yellow ochre. And I'm using both a titanium white and a zinc white. If you don't have the magenta, you could probably switch it for your quinacridone. It's just a little bit cooler than I wanted. You could switch to your CAD yellow medium if you needed to and just have one blue. So don't feel like if you don't have this exact formulation of colors that you suddenly can't paint this at home. Let's get this, let's get this base painting in, which is going to be super fun. I don't want to start with zinc white. So I'm going to just put the lightest pink possible, the lightest pink that's slightly warmed over my whole canvas as a ground and I did a follow-up bit of research just to make sure that how I answered yesterday about a dead underpainting was accurate and it was that a ground is not a dead underpainting uh, that actually does refer to monochromatic studies and underpainting and something about the Flemish school so I was like oh yeah that thing but not relative to what we're doing here today in any way because we're just getting a nice little layer of color on the canvas it's not going to stress us out Woo! there it is it's all ready to go let's check and make sure it's titanium that is you can see from my finger because it's covering get my lipstick and perfume mess out of the way and i'm going to get me a nice big brush see this nice big brush number 30 all right sure but bright but basically you want something that's well over an inch wide synthetic filaments and isn't going to get
get too soaked when you dip it. See how I dip here and I pull off this extra water? So it's warmed, it's primed, it's got a little mo moisture in it, but it is not in any way, right? See how it takes very little pink to make this white pink? I mean, this thing just went full flamingo in a second. How's your full flamingo today, John? Good. <laughs> John's like, sometimes I get to co-host. All right, I'm adding just a smidge of this primary yellow to the color to make it slightly warm, as it would be. I am so fascinated by how this travel couple got this picture because it's just like, it's like candy in the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just go back and forth in big, bold strokes, right? See me? I'm big, bold strokes covering my canvas with this color pink. See how it's just a little bit lighter than my white. I mean, darker than my white, but not much. And I'm just brushing this in because I want a good coating. Dipping my brush in the water and pulling this out. This is just the slightest tone of a color on my canvas. But it is going to help me with the sky because I have this very nice light pink base to my sky. And it is going to help me with my beach because there's definitely a pink tone to my beach. Flipping my canvas because I like to be comfortable. Very important that you're comfortable when you're painting, right? A little bit of the yellow in here. If you run out of, uh, that's think again, if you run out of paint, just put a little more out. I load my brush. I have a little trick I do when I load my brush. Pulls a lot of paint in. So you'll be like, where'd all her paint go? Inside the bristles, where it belongs. So when I'm pulling out on my landing strip, you'll notice I flip the brush and that's how I get it loaded into the bristle set. So that I have a lot of paint. That's too much pink. Look, I got crazy. But that's okay. I just wipe it off and keep going. Because it's a ground. Ground. Oh no, ground. And I'm just going to make sure the rest of the canvas is toned with this pink. How are we doing? Did we get, did anybody show up? Because today is a holiday. Yeah, we've got over 500 people here just hanging out to paint this painting with you. They're so just like. 550 right now that are all just like, yeah, we're here to paint. <laughs> Excellent, guys. Hey, Sherpa. Am I Sherpa? And she said, they're saying, hey, Sherpa. Hey, community. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting in a pink ground. What are you up to? Are you guys recovered from chocolate and egg hunting and all those things? No, I think many of them are, are mid egg hunting. And You're like in the middle of it with your phone going, this kid needs to find this egg sometime soon. <laughs> I think there's a whole balance there. Like you got to put them out there, but uh, I have a lot of feelings on the about about the egg hunts. Like you know, if you're gonna do it in your backyard and host it, clean up the dog poo. <laughs> 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 Sorry. There are some surprises kids don't need to find. I'm just saying. Ah, <laughs> oh, childhood scarring experiences. <laughs> <laughs> we knew what happened to Cinnamon at one point in her life. Well, no, that didn't happen to me because we were Jehovah's Witnesses. So we did not hunt for any eggs. Mm -mm. Didn't do it. Do it now, though. I have my own kids. So my kids, my children were scarred. <laughs> now I know to ask a parent. Do you have a dog? Is there a dog poo? <laughs> 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 I didn't think that was a question you have to ask, but now I know it is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm the one who steers the show off topic, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, did, did I ever blame you for that? I'm going to have some coffee. Doesn't it seem like I need some coffee? <laughs> <laughs> I like I got mother. my spring spirit on, can you, you tell? You do. You have your spring, your... Uh, you, you, you I are, got my peachy lip. You're encompassing the Urban Dictionary of Cinnamon today. Yeah. Which yeah. Which we all... We all thought Cinnamon came in and she was like, did you have someone write that? And I was like, no. I did. I thought it was. You thought so too, though. Yeah, it's true. I, you were very funny. Uh, very much described us when we were first dating. I'm putting out some more primary yellow. And I'm going to basically put out uh, my whole palette because I'm in the next stage. I'm going to block in where objects are. 
which in, in this world is some clouds <laughs> and some water and some sunlight must be tough must be tough you'll have to you know totally hang with me here i uh had a morning of sandy the robot and i'm still kind of pivoting from that from what the the new ai robot that oh. scared me so bad right because you know what i'm the terminator generation and that is not a good idea <laughs> Well, luckily, so is Elon. So he's carrying all forward all of our anxieties and fears and watching out for us. And luckily, you know, he makes cool things like flamethrowers and electric smart cars that drive themselves. So if anybody is going to stand on the edge for us, it's going to be Elon. I, I, I believe it's Mr. Musk. <laughs> it's so. Mr. Musk. People we don't know. Let's see. We yeah. don't know Will Smith, but we comment on his channel. We don't know Elon Musk, but we comment on his Twitter. Oh, yeah, we're fun. I'm putting out. I'm going to go over the colors again as I get them out so you know what they are and where they are. Okay. So I've got them all back out again. This is the whole kit and caboodle of what I'm using today. I've got the Thalo green, Thalo blue, titanium white, magenta, cayenne, yellow, yellow ochre, and zinc. Right? I'm yep. going to dry this so I can kind of just like paint sketch in. Yep. where things are located and then we're gonna get some cotton candy clouds going okay and, well, there you go. while she's doing that i will say uh remember if you are uh drying your canvas at home to just use a low heat setting you just want the air to move across the canvas because all you're really trying to do is to speed up the curing and heat doesn't really do that um it can cause uh discoloration other things like that so uh, best to use your low heat setting and just move air over that canvas. Is that what it is? Just, you know, to help not <laughs> discolor anything or, you know, cause any problems. It's best to just use the lowest heat setting, right? I agree. Well, that's what you always told me. So I'm just repeating it while I'm doing just agreeing with you and kind of tickled that you've been listening and making a horizon line. Well, I mean, like, <laughs> what else do I do? I talk to the community and and someone was and and Melissa, I'm I'm doing my best today to keep up. Melissa, with Melissa, he is doing so good, and he's steering you straight. I'm gonna tell you that right now. <laughs> it's almost no excuse for him not to paint anymore. I'm making a level horizon line. Your big thing with water, your big thing, is to get this line level. Now I left my T square across the house. I'm not gonna go walk off and get it because it's April Fools, and y'all think I'm ending the show and freak out. So I'm hanging in here so you, so you guys know it's okay. Because I don't know about you, but my trust factor goes down a lot during this holiday. And so I'm just trying to hang with you. So, you know, building that trust. Okay, you know, building the trust. Which is why John said I couldn't do my crazy pranks. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> saving you. You have no idea how much. I'm going to make a nice little water line that's going to come down here. It's going to come down a couple inches from my horizon line. Wandering forward and then little back and down. Here we go. And then off this edge here. So this is beach. Be like there's a little bit of beach here, right? This kind of starts to fade in where the water starts to become so shallow it stops reflecting and stops being aqua and starts to be beach. And then we've got this little foam area, all this nice little water here. Right here is sort of our central light focus. So what you're going to notice is that the sky gradates from the top to the bottom, dark here, light here, but also there's a second radial gradation where the sun is, where it's brighter here and then dark out here. So it's sort of interesting, those two gradations playing against each other. But once we have that blocked in, we can start putting in some basic coats of paint to get that painting going. And the first thing let's do is get our brushes out of paint where they fall, because that's not helpful. <laughs> what now, am I doing, John? Well, now this this picture, mm -hmm. it, th th there was Steve was asking, where did this picture come from? Well, yeah, again, this is uh, Kevin and Amanda, the travel bloggers. Somebody in the community found it, put it in the group. It went, it exploded. Everybody's like, we got to paint this. And I was like, well, we got to get permission because... Oh, this photograph belongs to somebody. So then everybody reached out to them, especially the first person who posted it. And they came back and they said yes. And then I reached out to them and got a very confirmed yes. <laughs> it 
screenshot of and said, listen, if you could do us this all, we'll shout you out. So Kevin and Amanda, travel bloggers. Yeah. No, Links in the description below. We'll be all over everything. But actually, they're taking all kinds of pictures like this and they have some killer recipes. I sort of checked them out to make sure that they weren't like, you know, death to all humans. Because <laughs> sometimes that can happen. If you're live here with us, you'll see that uh, in the chat there, they, uh, Stephanie just dropped some links to them for us. Oh, thank and, you, Stephanie. And if you're watching on the replay, you can still check about and see the chat because it's saved for you right there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the, again, the, I put the links all in the description. Yeah, uh, definitely come and try to join us in the, one of these lives. It's a lot of fun. We've got a huge crowd here today with us, Cinnamon. They're really enjoying being that with you That is outstanding. Live. They just, you know, I know that you don't get to see the chat, but they're... I don't. Yeah. I don't. I'm sitting here mixing paint. I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> <laughs> they're having a great time. So what, tell me about the paint you're mixing. Yeah, they probably want to know that, huh? Yeah. They, they might want to. All right. I Well, what I actually did here <laughs> was I took some phthalo blue and some phthalo green, and I mixed them in a one-to-one -one ratio with my palette knife. This is a diamond head palette knife. Um, these are actually available now, my Art Sherpa to palette knives. If you felt like white palette knives are okay, but what I want is some saucy red ones. I've got those. They're the only red ones out there at the moment, which I think is fun. I don't know if you think that's fun, but I'm particularly tickled by it. Let's put in some water. So I'm going to take a nice this is a number 10 bright. Uh, this one is called Goldilocks in my line. But what you're looking for is a nice synthetic brush with a good edge so you can hold a horizon line. I'm going to load up. See, I've just done pull and flip, right? And now I'm going to make sure that I load this into my white paint and get a nice kind of aqua color. Now you can add a little of the yellow to capture that green tint to the water. See what I'm doing? But be cautious. You're pretty good at phthalo turquoise. If you need some more, oh, look at that on the pink. Is that not crazy? You're going to just very carefully, this is just almost like an underpainting. So just come in, put this first range of color in. We're going to come back and hit our reflections and our depth and everything. We just need to get our green on there. If you're having trouble getting the paint to flow out, you can use some of our recommended gloss glazing liquid by Golden. I do actually recommend this product and no, it is not sponsored. It's just a thing I love. I give it as a gift. Actually, I'm not even sure. Oh, yeah, here we go. So one of the things you're going to notice I'm doing is besides being very horizontal with my water, right? I am on the edge, the toe of my brush, and I'm making sure that the water is kind of an uneven edge here. Can you see how we're doing? Yeah. I'm going to just, I got my glazing liquid to help me flow it out. I'm back and forth on the brush, flicking back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Right. I've got some beach to blend into, but I definitely, definitely need to get some layer of paint down as I'm going. Is this fun or what? Yeah. This is going to be the brightest painting. I'm actually fully excited to post this on social media. It's looking and really it's like bright. And it's like an Easter egg. But I have something to confess. What's that? When I scheduled this out, I totally forgot to check for holidays. So I had no idea I was getting a little hair off there. No idea that this was going to be a Easter, April Fool's holiday in any way. Hmm. Until like it was too late. <laughs> we were committed. See how I'm doing the edges here? Coming on this edge and it's like this sort of feather bit here. So your two things to pay attention to, maybe three, is that this line, keep it as level as possible. A level horizon line is your friend. I just dip my brush in a little bit of water to improve the flow. Grabbing a little bit of the yellow. I'm going to just make sure that this is... One good way you could do this is if, if you have like an artist tape, you could tape your horizon line and get a really crisp edge. But if not, just try to remember that it's got to be level. The brush strokes have to be horizontal. 
right? And just going back and forth, trying to keep it as horizontal as I can. Getting it there. This is rough. I'm sure John's showing to you that it's super rough. Are you showing him how rough it is, John? I think so. How are you guys doing? Good? Good? I'm going to sip my coffee. What are you doing? I think it's doing really good. They're just really enjoying this now. Folks, they're, uh, this, is, this, uh, uh, this has been a great, great scheduled show, and a lot of folks are, are taking the time this afternoon to come join us. Are they? Yeah. I love that they are. I think that's pretty exciting. I'm kind of into that. I'm going to take this brush here that you see that's all dirty with pigment. I'm going to do a crazy thing. What's that? I'm going to wipe it off, but I'm not going to wash out the pigment. I'm just going to get the extra out. See how I'm doing? Mm -hmm. So there's some blue in there because I want to come into my yellow ochre that I have here. And just a smidge of my pink. See how I'm getting it? There we go. And I'm going to get some white onto the brush. If you need to get a little more pink on there, definitely do. Get my glaze going. Get your glaze going. Getting this pinky sand color. Because this is a crazy pink sand color. And I'm going to just go ahead and using the toe of the brush and I'm using a edge of my brush horizontal blending method. See how I'm doing it? Mm -hmm. I'm going to make this little wonderful barrier between the blue and the sand start to blend in. Get more glaze if you need it. Just work that through. It's kind of at an angle. Kind of at an angle. As it comes along here, you know, I'm just going to pull this here. We're going to be adjusting this. I did a really big canvas at NAMTA with a version of a sky like this that was really complicated. I don't know why I took on such a complicated little sky. Probably mentally practicing for today. I'm just pulling this in. And look, we're getting this nice blend between the bleat beach, the beach, and the water. Now as I'm coming forward, I'm going to take a little more of my pink onto this brush and a little more of my yellow ochre. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that gorge? Just delicious. I really like it. I'm finding a warm pink going to get my glaze and finish out that beach. Yeah. Look at that. So now the beach has this beautiful pink sand. I got a lot of questions. How am I going to get this pink sand? How am I going to get this color here? How am I going to get that color there? And again, I'm smoothly laying this out as I need to, letting these things feather together as they need to. The pink undertones are really my friend right now, aren't they? That's why I put them in. I had a plan. You're so quiet, John. Oh, Are you yeah. quiet because I keep mixing I, colors? I, yeah, I'm just reading. I'm actually reading the chat and just seeing what's going on. There's a lot of folks out here today. Just they're they're just excited to hang out and see each other. So there's just lots of chatting going on. Chat. I love that the chat's up now. I'm gonna feather this in and then I'm gonna take a breath because that was some stuff that we sort of had to push through to get laid in to break out our sky. I'm gonna rinse out my brush really well. Have some sips of coffee mist my palette so it doesn't turn into a dry dry uh, desert lake bed thing for me so that's I'm just going to take this water and then we'll say hi to everybody for a second while I reset for the second part which is the sky let everyone kind of catch up if you're painting live well, uh, yeah, there's, you know what I've seen a lot of folks uh, let's see uh, Gail was just saying that you can see all the live chat after the after the event so yeah definitely if you haven't had a chance to check out the live show you should definitely come and be come, come see that there's a whole lot of stuff that goes on out here you contribute know, your humor to the live show maybe you have the joke that yeah. cracks up the whole room I don't get I now get to see I didn't used to get to see what was going on now I sit there and quietly drink my coffee and read everything you have to say don't be self-conscious 
Uh, so uh, they were asking, does, does Cinnamon ever go back and read the chat from the replay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm a very nosy person. Mm. <laughs> Actually, what it is is that um, sometimes your feedback helps me determine things that I need to explain more clearly, uh, go over concepts or techniques again. Um, John will tell you I'm kind of obsessively driven on the idea that uh, your successes with the painting is about me finding new and interesting ways to explain it. And so I kind of read everything you guys put out there and I'm like, oh, this is going well. Or, oh, I should work on this. Or, oh, they're so funny. <laughs> A lot of you guys are funny. You guys are so funny. Yeah, they really, really are. I'm funny weird, but you're funny haha. <laughs> I'm going to get a note on this hairstyle. No, I, but I've been really dying to do the it. They, they very much enjoyed the hair bands today. Thank you. Thank you. I've been dying to do this. Dying to. And I was just like, you know what? I'm doing it. It's spring. I got to sprung it. T time to do it. Time to do it. When else am I going to do it? What am I? Probably until the end of my life. I was actually just talking to somebody about how like advanced style is the coolest thing in the world. And if only I could grow up and be that awesome. For those of you guys who don't know, there's a whole New York style movement. Um, there's like Susie Gertz and a bunch of different artists that are there. And they do this thing called Color Walk. And they're all extraordinarily fabulous. Fabulosity, I mean like look amazing in a bikini at 80. Mm -hmm. You know, probably could get to base camp at Everest. Just hiking. Group of people and they make me so optimistic about my future. Like that it can be fun. The whole way. All right. <laughs> what does great. everybody think of that? They think they love your hair. They think everything that you got going on today is really great. I hope you're being playful in your life. Are you playing enough? Mm-hmm. Are you? Yeah, I think so. Somebody suggested Kimberly. <laughs> I can't really Kirk suggested I eat kale. And I was like, oh, my God. Kale, and I was like maybe chocolate, but then she like posted this really playful recipe, and I thought, well, Kimberly may be eating kale, but she's making it fun, mm. and that's what counts. Yeah, that's true. My second thought was, you're gonna have to come to my house and make that because that sounds really complicated, <laughs> and I'm definitely not soaking a raw cashew. Uh, no. I should. Yeah, I'm. I'm not up for that either. Are you also not soaking a raw cashew, John? No. I'm going to get a um, nice big bristle brush here and I'm going to start putting in my sky. Let me get my number 10 Cambridge. The Cambridges are a mix of synthetic uh, filaments and bristles and they give me a nice very rough soft kind of aspect and I need to lighten up the center of the sky and create some different little light aspects through here and then I need to start layering some clouds. So hopefully you guys are feeling really up for that because yeah, it's I think happening. So. So I'm dusting my, my brush here. Can you see I'm dusting it with a little bit of yellow? And I'm going to get some pink in there. But now it's warmed with that yellow, which I really, really like. Because it's got to be a little bit yellow. It's finding that, that range that you've got to hit is very interesting. So that's what I'm looking for. And I've over-misted my palette and now I have too much water. Gosh darn it. It's okay. I work it out. So I'm getting it's warmer, 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 but it's got to be lighter, lighter, lighter. Here we go. Light, light, light. Let's see how we're doing. We're going to come in here and see if we've up. Oh, yep. That's what it is. See how we're warmed it up. Yeah. Sometimes on the palette, it's hard to see. See, I'm just brushing back and forth and letting it be streaky. If you need to grab some glazing medium, I'm going to just put this through the center here like you do like you do there's a little bit of this up here I'm gonna even get my zinc involved because you know zinc is so transparent and will soften the color without altering the color this is the biggest challenge for me because I am a pretty dark value painter mm-hmm and this is super high hat. In other words, it's very light values, very feminine palette. Interesting. So I am just, can you see I'm in this upper corner and I'm brushing back and forth, 
the shape I've got, it comes down here, it narrows, it starts to make uneven edges here. So I am super into this, super, super into this. All right, now I'm gonna really warm this horizon line. You see how I added a little bit of yellow and the zinc to everything? Yeah. It's because this right here needs to be quite warm. And we're gonna just brush this up. It doesn't really take a lot, but you've gotta start to warm up the aspects of it. Get some more zinc in there if you need. Oh, how you doing today, babe? Good. So is there a color that you could use instead of cayenne blue? Like, well, yeah. Remember I said at the beginning you could just get through with your thalo? Yeah. Okay. I would say that I chose these colors. I almost went out and got all quinacridones because I was really worried about getting the very bright aspect of this painting. But then I was like, you know, I'm going to get a little more pink on here. Very, very pink. Let's go pink, 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 pink. Pinky dinky do. Oh no, I invoked the pinky dinky do. What am I thinking? Well, let's lighten this through here. The trick is, is just getting your values. Values more than exact chroma or color are a big deal. Values more than the exact chroma or color are a big deal. Hmm. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. I'm gonna wipe. I got a bunch of yellow in my brush. I'm gonna wipe it off a bit. I'm gonna get some zinc. Why did you wipe it off? I had too much. And I'm gonna put in this little bit of glow here. Look, right, I'm just brushing just a smidge of it. This is gonna be peeking around my clouds. And then right here, I'm gonna also add a little bit of this. Can you see me? Wiggle, 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 goes a brush, wiggle, wiggle. So can, up close, I don't know, John, can you show them this back and forth of the bristle? Oh, yeah. So when I'm going, this is actually what I'm doing. It's it's like they're dancing. And they go, wiggle, 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 goes the brush. Isn't that lovely? Oh, already we have a little light in the sky. Yeah. I love it. Now, on, yes. on a scale of one to three, w uh, how many how many is this? We, uh, well, what, what I'd say is is if you're comfortable with dry brushing, and you wiggle wiggle wiggle, it's mm, an easy two hoot. If clouds and those shapes are just really really challenging, it could get up to a three hoot because on this one it's about where your comfort zone is. Hmm. Right. Okay. No, that totally makes sense. I'm filtering in my head. I wanted to say something crazy, but I filtered it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> it scares John. <laughs> He's oh, no, not sure how much delay he has. Not enough. <laughs> 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 I think my delay is in milliseconds. Yeah, it wouldn't be enough. It's it like would be I, out. I it would be out into the internets before we could <laughs> address it. Yeah, I think I'm six milliseconds delay to YouTube, and YouTube has, you know, once it's on YouTube, there's like a... 20 second delay but that's i can't control that yeah, yeah. i'm gonna miss my thalo turquoise but not the rest of my palette because that needs to dry out but i need to keep this wet and i've got to make a slightly nice little warmed pink for the background uh clouds what brush do you have i have oh this is a really neat brush this is a number 12 silverstone by silver um, they're not like overwhelmingly pricey. It's all bristles. I'm going to be doing a lot of this with dry brushing and glazing because I've got to put in a lot of softness, a lot of softness, which is a cousin to the hotness. <laughs> so I'm taking my yellow ochre to my magenta and I'm creating a lot of the softness. I'm going to get a little of my zinc on here for its light transparent nature. And first, I'm going to create the warm parts of the clouds. So in this sky, because of the positioning of the sun and the time of day, the underneath of the clouds are cool and the top of the clouds are warm. And our positioning sees the underneath of the clouds vanishing in the horizon, which means I got to warm the top 
and the distant things and cool the closer things. But Interesting. You know that was happening. That's so a lot of things happening. So I'm going to just see. I'm going to wiggle, 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 wi
I'll even add a little of my glazing medium so I don't lose the color too quickly. I'll wipe off on the brush if I have too much paint on there. And I'm going to get my zinc again. Like, Man, you really like that zinc. I do when it comes to clouds. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. And I'm just getting a very light color. And I'm going to come here. And right off the bat, you should be able to see how this is cooler than the other stuff around it. It's just cool. And it's just light. And I'm using the zinc because it's airy. It is letting stuff like peek through, which you do want, because clouds let light through, don't they? They're they're kind of crazy like that, but they'll they'll totally like let the light through. And you can even go over the yellow, and you'll notice that it grays on its own. Like you don't necessarily. Let's load up again. Just a little bit more of the color. Like even on this like downward here. You can come back and forth on a line for these low clouds. And then just sort of using the corner, see I'm using the corner of my brush. I'm just talking about some low clouds here. Maybe there's some little low fellows right there. Look, look we're make a little low fellow, another little low fellow. They're just distant little fellows. I'm going to put out some more zinc. How's everybody doing? Good. Are they like doing their usual like clouds? <laughs> <laughs> so what was the, 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 they thought this was great. Now, Angela was just asking, what was the name of that last brush you just used? Uh, the Silverstone. Yeah. Yes. These, this is a number 12 Silverstone. Okay. I think we'll these are on sale at several brick and mortars right now around the world. And we'll put links the, in the description below for that. I actually have a link to the brush maker. And they have that whole new, like, where to find your brush thing. I'm so awesome like that. Because <laughs> I'm like, you need to know that info, right? You do. You need All quick right. links for that. I am starting to cool this color up here. Like you do. This is very soft. This is very rouged. I'm on the corner of the brush. I'm just using some nice little push around. There we go, cooling it down, but leaving some warmth peek through, don't we? So Neil's not understanding why the, some clouds are warm or cool and what that's about. Okay, hey Neil. Um, so let me see. So what it is, is the sun casts a warm light. That means it's on the color wheel. Let me set this correctly. All right, so this is the color wheel. Everything from the yellow through the red is a warm color. Reminds us of fire and things that are hot. As we come around the other side where the blues and purples are, there we go, those are cool colors. They remind us of ice. When the sun is on top of clouds, it creates a warm light, right? on top of the clouds. And when that happens, there's a shadow on the bottom, there's reflected light from the earth, it creates this cool shadow underneath. And so that's how we can kind of say the shape of clouds. Even when we're just planning a crazy flat surface and we're pretending to like know where anything actually is. <laughs> oh, gotcha. I'm adding a little more of the cayenne blue, but can you say I just do it real soft? Not like a ton. And I'm going to make sure it's not too heavy on my brush. But I'm going to keep cooling this a couple places up here. So again, we're just talking about what is in direct sunlight. And that was a good question, by the way. I love it when people ask those questions. Because if you're coming in to the channel and you're real new, and artists everywhere are going, it's a warm color. You're like, what is it? Did you heat it up on the stove? That is a reasonable question to have, by the way. <laughs> Because you're like, why is it warm? What does that even mean? Am I heating my paint? <laughs> is it like embossing liquid? I don't understand what we're talking about here, right? Sometimes yeah. it feels like that, I think. Well, I, th I think that's what a, a lot of the confusion is for new painters. I think so. So I'm just, see how I'm pressing this in? Yeah. Look at the, the press on it. There it is. So this is how I'm getting these soft, diffused areas. 
Let's see how we're doing. We still need to cool it. Cool it, man. Oh, that was too much cool. <laughs> too much. Let's come over here and mix that more, uh, more cautiously. Oh, my goodness. There we go. That's quite cool, isn't it? And almost once you see it, you can't unsee it. Like once you see that cat on repeat in the matrix, you're pretty much stuck seeing that for the rest of the series. You notice all those things. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to put a little more cool here. There's a couple little spots and I just want to. There we go. Just let's give those like, oh, that's too cool. We're going to blend that out. If it gets to be too much, my advice is take the uh, magenta and the zinc together and watch this we're going to just blend this out we're going to fix that just lean into it right yeah so let's get a little more of the magenta on there a little more of the white zinc 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 let's just keep making some little shapes and we can even see how light this is how much of the canvas is showing through my pressure isn't very hard on this brush I can always just get more zinc I love this sky yeah everyone here is really loving it too let's see it all right so we're still pretty saturated but that's me I really want to pull that out. I don't like it at all. So I'm going to take a little of my magenta and my yellow ochre again, and I'm going to get some of my white. And that's my titanium white, and I'm going to just very carefully work that out. See how we're doing? Oh, yeah. Because I just did not dig that. Or you can always just work this through a couple places if you need to. Like, oh man, I did not like that at all. And if you don't like something, just own it. Just be like, dude, I don't like that. This is all the titanium white. And the reason I've switched from the zinc to the titanium is the titanium has the pigment in it to cover things. If that makes sense. And that's the difference between titanium and zinc? Mm. Zinc is, it's, the tinting strength of zinc is much milder. It doesn't take your pieces as far away from their original value. Their, not their value, their uh, color, their hue. Mm -hmm. So your blue stays pretty blue. Your red stays pretty red. It doesn't just become pink. It doesn't become a whole nother hue. Hmm. I'm just trying to plan that out. Having a whole little moment here. Like I do. Like you do. Like I do. Like I did all through NAMTA. <laughs> Just trying to lighten the middle of the sky. Because I feel True. like it needs to be light here. So that's what's happening here. And I might come up here. And again, I might lighten some of this up up here. Look going to take this in here. Just make sure that this is light enough. And what's nice is as I push the clouds back, it just blends them in, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So it's not like I'm working my sky and things aren't going to be okay. Let's see how I'm looking. I got to look at it from distance, which is you guys at home. All right, now I'm going to get a bunch of my zinc on here. I'm going to just take this back. I've got pigment on my brush, but I'm just kind of making sure that this is very light. There's a lot of cloud layers. Ah, I think I'm just working my way through it. And that's what it is, is you'll be like, all right, I'm, I'm getting it, but I've got to push this cloud layer back. 
I've got to lighten this. I've got to warm this. Where am I going to take it? Now this here, the big bunch of the clouds is, is actually, it actually is quite cool. Almost, um, it, you might not realize it when you first look at it, but it's almost got like a purple value to it. Which is like kind of interesting to see. And that kind of comes along here in this line. But what's nice about this is having put these warm clouds, when I start to put this cool kind of violet cloud in, not violent, these clouds are not violent, and I'm pushing my little brush here, like you do, and I'm starting to define the shape of this forward shadowed cloud, right? Yeah. A lot more zinc, maybe, for this little fellow right here. Coming up so it's lighter. Let's see how we got it. And you'll see the shapes of them on the traceable. Like, I made sure to really define the shapes of these. There we go. Loading up, loading up, loading up, loading up. Getting my zinc. When I work my white, the coverage is so much greater that it makes it really show. I'm going to just make sure I've got this shape coming down like I have here. You can kind of see it's pushed down. And then there's an interesting little spire shape going up. I'm just trying to let a lot of this still be open. Let's see how that's going. Do we have some purple there? We got a little purple there. Yeah. We're cooling it off. You know, and then we're going to get a little more of the zinc right here. And we'll say that there's a little bit of a bank that kind of thinks it's going to come down here. And then there's this little bit of a friend that's happening here. Here we go. See how we're doing? Now look at the wiggle. Oh, wiggle, yeah. wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. See the shape? Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Doesn't work as well with the red handles. They're not designed to push out this way, but these bristles are. Or they may not be designed that way, but that's what we're doing to them. <laughs> right. Doesn't really matter what they want. We're coming for them anyways. So I'm just making sure I've got these sort of atmospheric little pushed out bits. So now this guy's getting like, it's on, right? Are you feeling it? Oh, yeah. I am too. So it's a great time to make sure that you've got that nice, remember the warm pink? I'm going to get some white on here and make sure it's super light. Maybe even a little yellow. I'm going to go ahead and push, look at this, push some light back into this cloud. Oh, yeah. We, we need it, and that's how you do that. Oh, there's a little bit here. My pressure's so light. And I'm able to just come back in, come back in, and really lighten it. You know, you're just you're just saying, hey, I'm I've got this negative space here I'm also talking about too. I'm almost where like I could say I've gotten rid of some of that. There we go. Just just lightening that up, right? Just lightening it up. Get a smidge of the ochre. Look at that. We're lightening up that sky in there. Just got to keep pushing it. Just like, I see it. Oh, I see you. Now, Zoe asks, if, Hi, you're, a, Zoe. if you're a vegan um, and you don't do bristle brushes, um, what would you suggest as a substitute? Either 
my cloud number eight or a ruby satin round. The shape of this will let you do this type of scumble and it's very synthetic and then this round. So you could switch it out to these two. Gotcha. You guys see that? Yeah. So you're not stuck. And those are concerns that you may have as an artist. Right? Like what's my footprint? How am I disposing of my water? You know, am I, is there, in general there is not animal testing. Right. In the art industry, even the way that they acquire the filaments for Brussels and natural stuff is about sourcing what is already out there and making relationships. They don't, uh, there's not enough money in the art industry to even create those relationships. So that's an important thing for you to know as an artist is that, um, you know, even if it's it, with the exception of oil paint, but in acrylic, if it says ivory black, nobody's got money to go talk to the animal preserve to get any ivory. Right. It's not happening. I am lightening this up even some more. You know I'm doing? So oftentimes they're trying to say that it's that historic. It's light. Yeah, they're talking hue. <laughs> they don't mean nothing real. And I, I'm just saying that because you might not know that. And I've had some friends that were vegan and got real upset. And I was like, no, that's not, that's not like a real thing that they have. So Some oil companies have it. But again, even the oil companies that do, they have to work with a preserve. They have to work with um, an area where the animals have passed naturally. And not only have they passed naturally, but they're no longer even visiting that graveyard, the elephant graveyard. So they can't even get, if the elephants are still going to their graveyard, you can't even get that ivory. Yeah. And nobody in the art materials world is at all interested in endangering animals, um, you know, upsetting elephants who are mourning as as a community, they're very much like you. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> they would not be okay with that. I I don't know where Indian yellow falls on that. Of nobody's collecting any buffalo pee anymore. Well, yeah, but feeding your buffalo and mangoes, that wasn't North American buffaloes. You know, but feeding them mangoes and collecting their pee. I don't know if that's being mean or. No, nice it, was, it wasn't inhumane, but it was very challenging and not cost-effective, and now they can make it with a hue pretty well. It just was difficult. We so see how we're opening up that cloud base, and we're lightening and lightening and lightening. Yeah. So I'm going to take my slight blue and dust this wonderful brush with it, and I'm going to come get my magenta and also dust my wonderful brush with it. Now I'm going to get into my whites. Look at that. See how it's so different in how it colors? If you need, you can actually, people don't really, like, if you're trying to neutralize the cloud color, you just add a little yellow to it. Because it's purple, right? Mm -hmm. Contrast to purple is the yellow. So now, you can kind of come through and push up. Look how we're doing on this. This sort of kind of shapes its way up here in this weird way. We can see it go up and it comes up here. Look at that. It's sort of fun to do this, I feel. How are we doing? Let's see how that's looking. <laughs> I like clouds. Yeah. A lot of people don't like clouds, but I'm coming to just be like more and more a fan of clouds. Just because I feel like they're sort of a joy to paint and... This probably will all stay very light and no hard edges. This is all going to be about hard edges and soft edges. Finished out. Maybe a little bit here. But not too much. And then, you know, hey, a little bit here, right? But not too much. How are we doing? I'm going to look at that real quick. <laughs> it's crazy. When it happens, it happens, right? Yeah. It's just, you're just like, wait, where'd it come from? Yeah, it just goes fast like that. A little bit of cool, a little bit of cool. And see, I'm just adding a little bit of this purple to the shape. This cool because it's towards us, right? Oh, I'm just loving this. 
I am. I, I'm not even going to... Where did my... Oh, there's my cloud. All right, now I get to get into my cloud brushes. So this, I would say my best cloud for something this size is a number eight. If you have a brand new package and you're thinking this, this is the moment I break these out. Let me give you some tips. New brush, especially on my clouds. This is like an infinite deer foot stippler, which means that the active side for painting is the side here, not the tip. The side, not the tip. You want to loosen your brush with your thumb. I literally was sending an experimental brush design these with D-Silver. And when I first got them, I was like, I don't know what I would do with that. And then just needed something that was like a deer foot stippler, but didn't have one. And then got one and it was too soft because they're mostly too soft. And found this and I was like, if I just loosen this up, this could be like the best deer foot stippler ever. Hmm. And so see how I've fluffed it out. And now it's, now it's sprung, if that makes sense. I'm gonna take a little of my blue, dust it on here, a little of my pink. All right, we're dusting it on here. This is going to be my darker color, like what you have. I might get my zinc on there. And I'm going to come along the edge, the bottom of my clouds. Look at this. Mm -hmm. These give me a hard edge without a palette knife. These don't work great if your canvas is not yet dry. This is a dry brushing tool. And in fact, I might even hit my my canvas a little bit with a hair dryer, <laughs> a little bit with a hair dryer, so that this is going to glide along the top. You guys yep. ready? Okay. So remember. Okay. So while she's doing that, don't forget just use a use your dryer on the lowest heat setting because you just want the air to go over there just to help speed up the curing. And gosh. I'm going to just say thank you guys. You have so many people hanging out. We've got over 700 people hanging out with us live today. So thank you guys so much for coming. Don't forget, share your pictures. Post those up on the social media. Love, love, love to see all your paintings and your photo and, and, and all of your work. So don't forget to post those up. And just thank you guys for coming and hanging out with us today. It's really nice to see you in the chat. If you, don't have a ch if you haven't had a chance to join us in the live, definitely if you get a chance to join us in the chat. We really love seeing you. What you, oh, you're saying you should come be in our lives? In our live chat, yeah. In our live chats. All right, I'm just reloading this brush, but now I know the canvas is super dry, so it's really going to dance long here. And I want you just to find the edges, the bottoms of your clouds, and you're going to give them, see how I'm pressing in and then kind of wiggle, 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 wiggle the brush. And I'm just coming along here and I'm wiggling the brush. And then even when I'm on the side here, be sure you're varying the... This is its jam. I can do that little weird motion. I love that little weird motion. There is a couple other spots, like there's there's a little shadow right here. And you're just saying, hey, I see your shadow. And I exaggerate it for you. Because that's where the art sauce is. I'm just pulling this along here, just making sure I'm finding those shadows. See how that's looking? Are we getting some shape in our clouds? Look at that exaggerated shape to our clouds. How are they feeling about it? This is crazy, this is awesome. Feedback good so far. Oh yeah. We got over 700 people and they're just loving this. This is a really, really incredible. And uh, yeah, no, there's, the, the, really enjoy the color combination I think probably the most and the wiggles the wiggles are fun something to remember sometimes when you're watching art sometimes even on YouTube it's performance based in other words like if I know the way my camera sees my painting and I've got a big brush I can flip 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 a cloud it looks amazing on camera eh, in real life we're definitely going to show you some of those techniques but remember that spending a little time with your sky doesn't hurt you yeah. No. Your sky will love you for it. All right, I'm going to get a lot. I'm going to get a little more pink on here. So I'm getting my pink on here, pinking it up, and I'm getting a lot of white. Oh, I love getting my white. I'm going to do something kind of dramatic as long as my pigment's in here. A little more pigment. So it's still in the purple, but it's just very... 
we're going to talk about some of these edges a little bit. Where it's at the top, right? Come in and, and say, hey, edges, I see some of you, not all of you. And then come up there. Let's see how that's looking. Edges, how's our edges? Edges are starting to pop. All right, I'm going to come in here and I don't want to do this on all my sky, and then I'm going to come here especially, and I'm just going to be like, look at that. This little set of clouds down here worked out. Here we go. So I, what I'm doing is I'm pushing up, paying attention to the shapes clouds make. Right? They make shapes. You need to be like aware of the shapes that they're making. Now we did a cool thing yesterday, and I think it's going to be really interesting to pull it here. Let's come and add some of this here. A little whimsy. A little whimsy, little cloud whimsy, right? Rinse this out. Rinse it out really good. I'm going to take my yellow smidge of my magenta. Mostly my yellow, a ton, ton, ton of my zinc. The trick is going to be to get a lot of pigment out and get just my zinc in here. Make sure also that you're talking about some of these edges that are seeing some of the light. Can you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I like this. It makes them happy. Needs to be even lighter than that. I might get right into my titanium white, actually. I need a really strong point of view that's warm. Coming right along here. See how we're doing? Mm -hmm. Not everything we're doing. We don't need to say this everywhere. Just a couple places. So see how I wiggle here? Yeah. Come down. Let's see how that's looking. Do we have, oh, look at that. We've got those little lights, don't we? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Too much white. Wipe it off on my towel. Just going to make sure that this right here, look at that, has this blended, thoughtful little bit of sun right here. Look at that. You're like, wait, I could just do any old sky. Yeah, you can. You can. It's all doable. The reason I like a dry brush tool is you're seeing it right now. I'm going to just make sure that I bring this out. Look at that. It has soft dry brush in that here. Isn't that amazing? Because we can make it pour out into the water, which is going to be great when we put in reflections. Where are we at? Do we have some dramatic light? I feel like we do. Yeah. I feel like we have some super, super dramatic light. I'm still enjoying my clouds, but I feel like I'm nearly there. I'm just going to pink up some areas. So I'm taking my quinacridone and a lot of my titanium, and I'm going to just make sure that I'm Some pinks here and there. I love playing with my clouds. The hard edges versus the soft edges. Just dancing around, being like, where can I add some personality? Where can I quirk it up? I think I'm getting to a place where I've got to just stop <laughs> or go for <laughs> six hours. It's like uh, in a painting, there's a turning point. Stop and accept go for six hours. Decide now. Yeah, We're so going to finish it out. <laughs> Jamie was just, uh, was it Jamie? It was, uh, oh, no, Jamie was saying uh, something that she was pregnant when she was doing her one her, her last paintings. And really? But, yeah, Congratulations. But, well, but I, I was I was going back. Someone else was, uh, there was just saying that they were amazed that we were live for like four hours. 
Uh, oh, Lynn. Not today, like, though, right? No, no, no. She couldn't okay. believe that we were on February 9th. We, okay. were, we had a four-hour live, and she was like, I, mean, I can't believe you guys went that long live. Yeah, no, we can do that, though. I mean, like, my actual painting speed, like, is pretty long, so yeah. So you could be just p tinkering on this forever. I could. I'm going to make a little purple here. See how I'm taking my magenta in my blue and I'm making a nice cool color. That's pretty cool. And now I'm going to come here. This is going to be my sea foam. My sea foam, interestingly enough, is going to be an off-white. And the off-white is going to be slightly cool. See how we're getting in? Yeah. We're just barely, barely. Now we'll hit it with some stuff, right? But this is going to really help us. I might even leave this here. I might use all that paint. I'm going to re-chalk my little foam line because I'm going to show you a trick the brush does. You can do it with any brush, but I just want to. Let's just do the foam line. So now I've got my foam line. And I've got a bunch of paint. Make sure my brush is dry. I'm going to load up a lot of this brush, you know, can put out like a little palette knife. And I'm going to use its thick little aspect to do that. See how I'm doing? It's like a very thick paint. It's dark. This is going to let me come by later. And I like it to be a little bit thick. I might switch to my smaller, I might actually switch to my number four, just to have more control. So I'm switching from my eight to my four. Yeah, just because on this size canvas. But this is gonna give me this noticeable bead, and look, I can feather this back, and soften this side, but have a hard edge on that side. It's just my favorite thing. <sighs> bead. Look, we're pulling a bead, and then we can soften it. Look at that soften. Very important, because I can then come back and shadow this underneath that lip, and then do my sand, and it's like amazing. The other thing I can do, remember we had that um, little bunch of trees right there? So I'm going to actually take my teal and my magenta. My See how dark that is? Oh, yeah. And along this back side, I'm going to use this little dry brush to talk about some distant little land. Look at that. The land in the distance. And it's in. So much fun. We're going to get our beach in. We're going to get our water in, our reflection in, and then we're done. I know we've spent a lot of time on the clouds, but I think that that's where everybody really wanted to have their secret sauce worked out. Really? Yeah. Now I'm going to take that purple that I so happily mixed, add a little zinc to it so it's not totally that dark, but still pretty dark. And I'm going to come along this horizon line right here crisply with this brush. Now I'm going to blend that. Look at that. Look at that. I am going to blend that. So now we've got that nice purple kind of cool there that's pulling forward. I'm going to go ahead and add this to where the island is because, or land mass, just because it would have it. Just a little bit. But not all the way through. Too much, right? So yeah. even if you come through here, you got to be just super light. Can't be heavy with that because we're going to be pulling a bunch of yellow down. Let's make up a bunch of really pretty watercolor. 
And so some of this is going to be, I'm going to take a little of my magenta to my yellow ochre, getting that kind of color, right? I've got a bunch of my ocean color. So let's pull this out and let's add some yellow to it. So now we're happily into the greens, aren't we? We've got still the teals. Look at the all the little kind of aqua escape colors that we've got going. And we can start pulling these into our ocean. Look at that. Yeah. Now I'm going to be, all my brush strokes are going to be back and forth, wiggle, wiggle, back and forth. You can take a little of this back this way. You don't want to get too crazy with it. And again, your ability to just sit here and be with the piece is going to be really impactful for how the piece works out for you. Right. I'm really happily going through this very quickly, but you may want to slow down and find your pacing. I'll put out some zinc too. You know, make sure that you're moving in a way that's like perfect for you. Don't forget the power of the zinc. Look at the power of the zinc. Creates, wow. It's another way to create a very soft out edge. Look at that. We know we've got to put a lot of light through here, so you might as well soft it out. Soft out that edge. Soft, 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 soft. I'm enjoying it. You can find the zinc white in a lot of paint companies. There's also, it's called tinting white, mixing white. So don't feel like this is something you can only find if you're in a high-end paint, because that's not necessarily true. All right. I'm going to keep getting into my thalo turquoise, which is one part of my green and one part of my blue, my thalo blue, and I'm going to keep working my oceanic color. Yeah. This getaway color. Who is putting this on the wall today? This is great. I think a lot, I've seen a lot of people saying they, this, they're going to really enjoy painting this. It's a like, lot of fun. And I'll go back through here and see. The, I noticed that I saw some folks that were painting along with us today, and I saw some little brushes painting with us. So there were little brushes painting with us. How are you guys doing? Oh, really good. They love that. You know, we've got over seven hundred, almost seven hundred and thirty people here with us, and they're really, really. They just everyone's commenting how much they've enjoyed this painting. I am loving this too. It's zinc white what I'm grabbing here, guys. If you're wondering. The colors have been really fantastic. The col That's like my favorite thing is color. Yeah. I just love it. I just grab some glaze and look at how that helps me blend out. I don't worry about not having oils. Not even at all. All right, here we going. Let's see. So we're starting to get it. Are we seeing the bright, bright aspects of the water yet? Oh, yeah. We definitely, definitely want this to feel like very aqua. If you have Southern Ocean Blue from the Matisse line, this is a really great time to pull it out with the Australian Sienna. I just didn't want to make everybody have to buy a ton of paint. Mm. But if it happens to be in your paint box, that was uh, titanium white that I'm blending through there. And I'm just trying to create that first basis of the water blend. You know what I'm saying? I'm just using my glazing medium. Sheila was asking, what about iridescent white? Could I throw that in there too? If it's giving you a good result, absolutely. It's not like, you know, someone's going to come into your house and take your painting away. That would be very weird of them, wouldn't it? That'd it, be super it, strange. Wouldn't you be just like, what is your deal? But like anything else, you should try that out if you've not used it before. Yeah. I feel like I mixed some, oh, there it is. I mixed some 
like a, this warm color right here and I need to get the half tone between the ocean and everything else. So here we go. I'm taking this to over to here and I think I'm going to use my zinc. See how it like graded out? But the thing is, is right here it is. If you look, it is grayed out a little bit. Which is again my nice Southern Ocean blue color here with a little bit of the little sand from underneath reflected. Let's make sure that this is light. I'm using white now. I switch from zinc to white, brushing back and forth, keeping my brush strokes as horizontal as I can being this far up on my canvas. When you guys are far up on your canvas like I have to be, it does make it a lot harder to keep everything level and stable. So be sure if you have the option, you back up and check things out a little bit. How are we doing there? All right, so it's lightening up. Now, so we have this wonderful reflection coming down. It comes down, there's a corridor right here and then a couple other little corridors here. How do we talk about that? My feeling is I'm going to pull out a little of my yellow and a smidge of my magenta, mostly into my yellow. I'm just warming this yellow up a lot, but I still want it to be yellow, if that makes sense. Getting it right into my First, I'm going to come across on this side going this way. Can you guys see me do that? Oh, yeah. It, the pressure is very light. Interestingly enough, I'm going to make sure that I bring it down here too, okay? Don't forget to hit your beach. Let's come back. A little more white. Now right here, very lightly going to give myself another little corridor, right? And then I had another little corridor. Very hard for me to see at this angle. <laughs> you can just adjust it so you can. Trying to. I'm just really on the canvas right now. I want to just make sure that I'm getting these little corridors down my water. And then I had another little corridor. So it, it was a very specific little bit of light coming through here. So once those corridors are talked about, I'm going to come back into my Southern Ocean Blue and a ton of my white. And I'm going to make sure that I am breaking this up. Look how I'm on the edge of my brush. Wipe up and need a little more white. See how we're doing? Mm-hmm. Making sure that they're there, but that we're breaking up the line of the reflection. See how that's looking? Yeah. Huh. Going to get a bunch more white on here. Now for the center part, it definitely goes more white. So I'm going to come from the left hand side with a stronger aspect because I know this side is lighter. Just make sure I break this up a little bit. Can, I, can you see me breaking it up? Oh yeah. Yeah, those layers look really cool. Yeah, it's 
just a lot of ways. A lot of people ask me, is that the only way to do it? Nope, that's just a way. It's my way today. Could be a different way tomorrow. Don't, you know, I can give you some advice on how I get this done. I can demo the techniques. But don't undercount your own experience. So let's see how that's looking. So now we have this beautiful water reflection coming down. Alright, it's pretty awesome. I'm going to take a little of my magenta and my Indian yellow, much more to my Indian yellow. Make sure there's not too much on my, my brush. This is almost like oranged. Let's make sure that we've got a little bit of this over here too. Look at that guy. Oh, you didn't know that was happening, did you? But I did. Let's just dance this color along the surface of the water. And you can also dance a little bit of it. A little, little. Through here a couple places. See? Along yeah. your corridors. That's a sort of warming of it, isn't it? See how that's looking. Looking pretty good. Let's finish that out. I'm going to get my little zincs and I'm going to just brush this over with that warmer color. And then I'm going to do an interesting thing. I'm going to get a little bit of magenta. And I'm going to make sure that there's a little bit of pink. Can you see where I'm putting it? Yeah. Over here to the left. Sometimes painting seems super simple, but actually they have a lot happening. There's a lot of layers on this one for sure. For me there is. For the, my process of getting stuff in, that's kind of like where I'm going to go. Yeah. Now I've got to make a shadow. Make a shadow. And I have this wonderful, lovely purple left, so I'm going to get it on this little brush. And I might actually take my canvas and turn it to the side here. So that when I paint this very carefully along here. I might even get a little of my turquoise into it, just to deepen it up. There we go. I'm just following along that nice little beaded edge. Look how we did. And anywhere I need to turn this to have a comfortable connection to the canvas I'm going to do, because what I don't want to do is move my body to position to the canvas. I'm going to position the canvas to my body. Right? Yeah. Injury is going to come from if I'm not shifting myself. And you were able to fi discover that a lot more here with the show. Right, because I always would have done it. But on the show, I was trying to be still. And that was not the best option. So I've got that shadow. When I come back in and clip that edge and soften it, oh my gosh, you're going to love it. You're going to be like, what? I'm going to be like, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Now, interestingly enough, I'm thinking of taking my scumbly brush here and my, my cloud brush. This is a number eight cloud Archerpa. Uh, I'm going to get that pink sand color that I was such a fan, fan of, and I'm going to definitely load up the white. And I'm going to just softly wiggle, 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 wiggle. And see how I can do it here? This sand. Look at how this rough brush. I may even flip the canvas again. Is that cool with everybody if I flip the canvas again for positioning? Yeah, sure. Let's change the canvas for a comfort. Here we go. And 
just makes this like this little rough sandy beach. Look at this rough little sandy beach. Come along my little light reflection here. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. See, just because they're called a cloud brush doesn't mean that's all you could ever do. Could also be a sand brush. Could be a sand brush. Could be a foam brush. Could be a tree brush. Might be a rock brush. How do you feel? Added a lot more white to that mix, and I'm just going to keep blending this through. If it's too much, you just wipe off, and look at how you can soften that out. So now I can talk about a sand texture. Lots of ways I could do this. I could sponge it. I could brush it. I could all kinds of things. But really what I want to say is that this is sand. I want to be able to come right on up to the wave. Look how it can come right on up to the shadow of the wave. Softening that. And very easily blend it through my sand. And everything about this brush lets me create this this sandy beach. Let's see how that's looking. <laughs> I'm looking at it upside down. But I really like it. Look, you can see it upside down. It's so cool, right? It's so awesome. It actually is pretty awesome. I'm gonna get right into my orange a little bit more. Back into my white. And I'm gonna come right here, right up to this thing. I can't tell you how close we are to done. It would freak you out if you knew. Really? Yeah. Like a lot. Any idea how close we were to done? Well, it's looking really good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Do you like how that works? And everybody's really enjoyed hanging out today. And we're looking forward to seeing everybody's painting because this has been a really, really colorful, really beautiful sky. Yeah, I'm enjoying this. This is like so much fun to paint. These kinds of reflections, these kinds of skies. I'm going to get my number four brush out and I'm going to load it back up with my purpley foam, right, which I made earlier, my grayed out purple foam. And I'm going to take a little bit of it back. See how I just wiggle, 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 wiggle? Yeah. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And let's talk about the foam back here, but let's do it in a... Look at how we wiggle back and forth. Just making these random shapes, aren't they? Now, guys, like I show you a bunch of techniques. I show them to you. I demo them. Remember you can practice them. Remember you can practice them on paper. Mm -hmm. You don't have to practice on your canvas. So if it's brand new and you've never tried it before, go ahead and get some construction paper out. It's not going to hurt you. All right. Just that's I think super important, right? Yeah. Now, uh, we saw at the at the I saw lots of people just using paper towels to practice on too. Yeah, paper towel, just something where you're like, oh yeah, I, I feel good about this stroke, or I, I, I feel good about what we're doing here. What I'm doing is I'm just talking about the foam coming in, and I'm doing it very expressively. It's a very expressive little painting. I love painting sea foam. It is so fun. Yeah. You could use any brush. I just like this one because it does this cool thing. But you could cool use thing anything, it does. Huh? huh? You could you could do this with anything? Yes, yeah, like a braid or a small braid. I would do a small too. Work the corner like we did the clouds. I'm gonna take a little of my sea foam into my sea. Like you do. There you go, just into the sea a little bit, like wiggling back and forth. Just a little bit. See how we're doing? Oh, I like my sea foam. Isn't it extraordinary how once that starts to happen and we start to really feel it? Oh yeah. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. See how that's looking? Looking? <laughs> I know. 
Looking really good. It's crazy, right? Like once it starts to happen, how much it happens. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying like I'm like a Josh Whedon show, but <laughs> you don't know where I'm going for a long time. And then all of a sudden it's awesome and you're there for season two. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that is Josh Whedon. Huh? That is Josh Whedon. I wish Josh Whedon painted with me. Like, where is this show going? Oh, wait, no, it's good. I feel like I feel like. We would be good. You know what I'm saying? We would be buds. I wish Josh Whedon painted with me. I wish Will Smith painted with me. I have one celebrity painting with me and I'm not loving it. <laughs> That's not a good thing. <laughs> All right. I'm loading up my brush with pure white and scaring John. Uh, I'm loading up my brush. And I'm going to come tap a little bit, look at this, of highlight here. Yeah, if you're like friends with anybody good and kind and loving and they want to paint, that would be cool. Yeah. That would be cool. Share it with your good and kind and loving friends. And actually, I should say one that I'm aware of. One that I know of. <laughs> right? Because there could be a wonderful celebrity could be many celebrities. That I'm painting with that I just heard about the one and I'm freaked out. But there could be wonderful people. I remember it was, a, it was working, I was working at what, some tech support company way back in the early days. And I think it was Bruce Willis called in. It was like freaked me out because I was like. I remember that. Well, I'll it, take Bruce. It was because I, I think at the time he was married to. Um, Demi. Yeah. Because, you know, we're tight. I'll take Demi. Well, no, she actually was the one who called into the tech support line. And so, and Marriage. like, yeah, well, and, <laughs> and the, the tech who actually got the call was kind of having a meltdown. And like, so it got escalated to me, you know, because they were, they were all kind of like, oh my God, is Demi more? And, you know, because, and, and then Bruce Willis came on the phone. He's like, look, I'm just having a problem with my computer. Can you help me fix this? I, I understand. <laughs> I seem like a celebrity to you for about 90% of my time. I'm just a guy that can't get this computer to turn yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. I was, like, I was like, absolutely, sir. Let's see if we can get this fixed. Yeah, John <laughs> so. is never, like, impressed. I'm always impressed. I think everybody's impressive. Yeah, but that's you. You, like, you're as excited about everybody. You are. I don't know. Also, unnamed celebrity that I won't mention. When I found out and I screamed and everything, I was saying everything to John. He's like, I just don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, but it's not good. He's like, you're fine. It's in the world. Art's for everybody. I'm like, okay. Hmm. Cecilia says she practices her strokes on mylar sheets. So she can clean them off and try I got to a thing. Cecilia, you do? That is awesome. That is a really good idea because then you could really see it and even clean it up if you wanted to. How are, How's our foam looking? Really good. Are we just kind of freaking out? I think right now I'm sort of indulging myself with the foam. That's okay. We can just foam it up. It's just really, this is my, this is like the frosting on the cake. This is my favorite part of the ocean. Yeah. I just put some uh, blue on there. I just want to soften some of these little lines out here. See how we're doing? Yeah. Just enjoying my little ocean. Making some little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle in the water, water, water. Wiggle, 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 wiggle your brush. Look at that. Wiggle, 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 wiggle your brush. My brush has dances. I feel like my brush does the tango. Hmm. Everybody likes your dancing brush. Everybody likes my dancing brush. Some pretty exciting stuff coming up on the channel. We've got some new products that we've never tried. You're going to get my first impressions. You're going to see some stuff going up about that really soon. It's going to be very exciting. You'll be like, oh, I wanted you to try that product out. I'm going to be like, I know you told me. We've got a really cool viewer challenge. We did this really cool beach. <laughs> yeah. Which actually I really, really like. 
been loving, loving, loving this painting. I think it came together and it's a gorgeous set of colors and I really love it. And we didn't have to go out and buy a bunch of new paint. Yeah. And that is really the case. Um, I think we have something. Didn't you say we were gaming soon? Well, Turkey we're gonna, Trot? We're going we're gonna, we're gonna wow. to yeah, try, try to do some more of those events. We'll be putting some of that stuff up on the Facebook page and organize. Definitely check on the website for information on that kind on of stuff. On the website and on the Facebook Art Sherpa page. Yeah. Group or fan page, either one. Hey, guys, do me a favor. Check your subscriptions uh, if you have the app because um, YouTube just said this whole thing like people like are um, accidentally unringing all their bells in the app. Hmm. I don't know that that's true, but it's what they said on their video. So just in case you did a no notifications, it might have been an all notifications thing. Ooh. If that bell doesn't have the parentheses, it isn't going to tell you I'm on. They did a whole video about it. John and I knew this already, but it's hmm. confirmed. If the bell doesn't have parentheses, they don't believe you really mean it. Gotcha. <laughs> so click it. Look for the parentheses, especially in the app, especially hmm. in the app, because they're not going to tell you unless you really urgently inform them that you want to. And remember, as much as YouTube talks to creators, they care much more about your experience and you can write them about the features that you want and the user experience you'd like to have, because without you, it's really not even a thing. Right? Absolutely. I, you guys aren't watching. There is no YouTube. Yeah. There is no Facebook. So feel like you've got a voice and you can talk to not just your paint companies, but these platforms to tell them the experience that you would like as a person who uses it. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Spring on up. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>